Hey everybody, Brother Barnabas here. Thanks for joining me today. And uh, today we're in John chapter 3, uh, verse 16, one of the most um, most memorized and well-known verses uh, in the Bible. And it's, a, it's very rich and it's going to be a great devo today. And so if you're blessed, then share it with others. Uh, give it a thumbs up or share it on social media. And let's dive right in. John chapter 3. Um, Jesus has uh, just gotten through explaining uh, to Nicodemus how one must be born again, how they have, a person needs to be born of the Spirit or born from above by putting their faith in Jesus and uh, lifting high the Son of Man and looking to the, to the Son of God, Son of Man, Jesus, and uh, receiving salvation and being born from above because uh, we can't achieve salvation uh, by our own works, by our own good deeds, by our own righteousness, by our own, you know, uh, prayers or Bible reading or whatever. You know, we're saved uh, by the grace of God through Jesus Christ by putting our faith in the cross of Jesus and his being high and lifted up and him being crucified and then exalted in our in our own lives and in the and in the world. Um, so we're going to dive right in John three sixteen. The Apostle John um, writing, although some Bibles do have this in red as if uh, uh, Jesus said it, but either way, it's just as powerful. It says, um, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. And let's just take it, um, uh, that verse 16, let's uh, just start there and take it, um, you know, word by word and, and meditate on it a little bit. You know, it says, for God, God so loved the world. I mean, it wasn't, um, this wasn't the kind of love for the world that many people have today where they... You know, they love to eat and they love entertainment and they love the pleasures of this world. No, this is a this is an unselfish love that God has because it's God. Just think about it, for God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, uh, the one who sustains us, the one who is, uh, is high above us, whose ways are so far above our ways and his thoughts above our thoughts. Um, this is God, the eternal God who always was and is and, and always bill, will be the one who knows everything you know the one who is everywhere present at the same time the one who is not bound by time you know god god so loved the world he loved the world he loved you and me he loved um this fallen creation you know he um even though we have our flaws even though we were defective and twisted and our thinking isn't right even so, he so loved us, you know, before we ever made a move towards God, before we ever asked him to, you know, before, uh, you know, before, um, it's just mind boggling. God so loved us, so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, Jesus, Jesus. He gave his one and only son. Some translations say only begotten. Uh, but what it means is is only one and unique. And yes, as we put our faith in Jesus, we become sons and daughters of God. You know, but we are a totally still uh, different than Jesus. Jesus was the one and only. He was unique. He is the only one whom the, the fullness of the Godhead dwelt in him bodily you know he is the only begotten the only one and only unique son of god we endeavor to become like him um, we are adopted into god's family we are members of the body of christ that represents him here on earth we're part of the spiritual temple uh, in which god um god dwells uh, but god dwelled bodily in jesus christ jesus was the temple of the holy spirit in a way that we are not. It takes all of us together. God does live inside of us, and we are children of God, but we're not the one and only Son of God like Jesus is. Anyway, so who he gave, God gave his one and only Son, uh, that whoever believes in him 
shall not perish, but have eternal life. So if we put our faith in Jesus, then we will not perish. We will not die. We will not be cut off from God forever and live in hell without him. But we will have eternal life with God forever. This is the great promise of Jesus Christ. This is the great promise of the New Testament, of the whole Bible, that God so loved the world, he gave his one and only son, that whoever might believe in him would not perish, but have eternal life. And I memorized those words um, for the first time uh, many, many years ago, uh, when the, someone that I, uh, that I, I really uh, loved and cared for um, was killed in a car accident. And, um, and, and a little boy, another, uh, another close, uh, uh, close relationship there, a little boy that I really loved and cared for as well, um, came in, um, and he said, you know, uh, she showed me this verse and we were memorizing it together. And he showed me this verse. And, um, and even though, um, I grew up in a church family and, uh, I know I had heard the verse before, um, at this point in my life was when it, it really hit home. It really took root. And uh, a couple days later, uh, when I was at the funeral for my friend, I gave my life um, back to God after having strayed away for, um, for many years. I realized how far I had um, wandered from the Lord. And, um, and, and God brought something good out of a terrible thing, a terrible car accident. And... So as I think about this, this one really hits home for me. And I hope there's people that are listening um, right now that maybe you've strayed away from God or maybe you've memorized this verse in the past but haven't thought about it in a while, you know. Maybe it's time for you to uh, really allow this to sink deep into your heart and just meditate on it the rest of the day, maybe the rest of the week, you know, that for God so loved the world, he gave his one and only son. That whoever might believe, that me, you, anyone who hears these words might believe and put their trust in Jesus Christ, that they would not perish, but would have eternal life, would live forever with him. Jesus has gone to prepare a place for us, and we'll all be together with him forever if we put our faith in him. Um, if we don't believe that these verses go on to say, uh, then we are still condemned. We're still in our sins. And we will perish and go to hell and be separated from God forever. Let's uh, read it word for word, verse 17. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. For whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only son. In other words, Jesus didn't come to c condemn the world. He didn't need to come to condemn the world. He didn't need he didn't need to because the world was condemned already by our own sin, by our own um actions because our sinfulness, our actions, our choices uh have separated us from God. And um and there's no salvation because we're separated by our sin. God is a holy and a righteous God. And um he cannot live in the presence of sin, and sin cannot live in his presence. So we're separated. We're condemned. Uh, we are without eternal life already. So Jesus didn't come to tell us that we're going to hell, although he didn't shrink back from telling us that. We were, we're destined for hell already without Jesus. But when we put our faith in Jesus, then we who were condemned can receive eternal life and are no longer condemned because our sin has been taken away. Because Jesus, by his dying on the cross for us, he took our place, took the punishment for our sins, and has given us his righteousness. So when we go to be, when we die, or, or Jesus comes back again, we don't have to stand before God on our own merit. We don't have to stand before him and say, you know, I did this, that, and the other thing, or, you know, I did all these good things to outweigh my bad things. And, um, uh, Instead, I said, you know, God, I'm so sorry. All those bad things I did, Jesus paid the price for them. He took away my sin. And in fact, we don't even have to tell him. He'll know that already, of course. But um, but it's just a, a, a wonderful thing that our sin is taken away. There's no more shame. There's no more guilt. It's all taken away. 
as uh, as uh, far as the east is from the west, so our sins are removed from us by Jesus. You know, though our sins be as scarlet, they will be white as snow. And um, so, friends, if you haven't done it already, you know, accept the grace of God in Jesus Christ. Put your trust in Him and, and know that His righteousness will become yours. The life that He lived here on earth, He was without sin. He kept the law completely. He kept the Old Testament covenant and all those blessings are ours in Christ Jesus. So receive the grace of God today. Receive the righteousness of God today. You know, I did that so many, many years ago at that that funeral at the at the loss of a of a loved one, you know, and I've never regretted it. That's been thirty plus years now, and um, and I thank God every day um, that I am saved by the blood of the Lamb. I am saved by Jesus shedding His blood for me. I have eternal life with Him, and even now in the in the here and now on earth, um, I experience a taste of heaven. I enter into the abundant life that Jesus offers. I have the power to live for him and to no longer wallow in sin. You know, I have the hope of eternity. I don't fear death. I know that that uh, when the Lord uh, takes me home, then I'm going to be with him forever. You know, death is like it says in the New Testament, falling asleep and then you wake up and you're in the presence of the Lord. And, um, and it's nothing to be afraid of. Uh, what I want to do is live for him the best that I can. I want to work out my salvation with fear and trembling. I want to offer others the opportunity uh, to put their faith in God and to tell them that God so loved the world, he gave his one and only son. And if you put your faith in him, you will not perish, but you will have eternal life. We can count on it. We can count on it. We're going to pause right there. Let's just go ahead and go to prayer. And Lord, I thank you. That we are not, Lord, as we put our faith in you, we are not in the ones um, that John writes there that are condemned already, Lord. But we are the ones who were condemned, but we are now saved through Jesus Christ. All condemnation is gone. All guilt, all shame is gone because we put our faith in Jesus Christ, the one and only begotten Son of God, fully God, fully man, who went to the cross died for the sins of the world, for mine and my brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, and that we will go to be with you and reign with you for all eternity. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If there's anybody here that uh, hasn't put their faith in Jesus, um, just pray this prayer. In fact, let's all pray this prayer together just to reaffirm our faith in Jesus Christ. Say, Lord God, Forgive me for my sins. I have fallen short. I have missed the mark. I have done wrong things. Whether by mistake or on purpose, I have sinned against you and you only. Forgive me, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. For dying on the cross for me. Cleanse me from my sin. Give me your righteousness. Help me to live for you. I put my faith in you. I give my life to you. And I will do my best to serve you. I love you, Lord. I look forward to the day when I will be with you forever in paradise. Everybody said, Amen. And until next time, God bless your brothers and sisters. It's been good spending time with you.